Uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much, Suarez, for the invitation and congratulations for organizing this this nice workshop, this modern workshop. Um, as as Suarez said, I'm going. The the title of my presentation is the same title of the project in the cine. So I will present to you what we are doing in our laboratory in the frame of the CINE project. Um, first, I will start introducing uh, our division. So the principal investigator of our division is Professor Ana Flavia Nogueira of the Institute of Chemistry. If you want to look for more information, probably all of you know that we have the, the CINE web page with detailed information about, about the CINE. Then there are several copies, Professor Claudia Longo from Unicamp, Ernesto Pereira, Oscar, Flavio Leandro de Sousa, University of ABC, and me at the, at the Unicamp. So we have several projects. The project one is devoted to synthesize materials for water splitting, and the head is Ernesto Pereira. The project two, is uh, devoted to synthesize perovskite solar cells for artificial photosynthesis, that is to say for the reduction of CO2. Then our project, I will explain uh, in the next slides um, the, the aim of our project and what we are doing. Um, Claudia Longo from Unicamp, uh, Again, devoted to study the CO2 reduction, um, but of course, in different materials that the project of Ana Flavia. And last but not least, Flavio, again, studying the uh, water splitting, but preparing different materials that Professor Ernesto Pereira. So, well, these are the, the two reactions studies studied in our in our division uh, my colleagues prepare uh, semiconductors so the idea is to uh, excite an an electron and you have electron with high energy and you can use the electron to reduction reactions so we are interested in the production of hydrogen but also in the reduction of CO2. If you promote an electron, you have a hole and you can use the hole for the oxidation. So in water splitting, uh, my colleagues generally oxidize uh, water or OH. Here you can reduce proton of water. That depends on the pH you are working. Um, but as I said in the, in the last talk, um, some people is also interested in oxidizing uh, another another molecules. Well, you, you can produce different uh, products using the the CO2 electroxidation. So, my colleagues prepared the semiconductors and studied different reactions. In our group, we do not study a specific reaction, but we study all of them. So our idea is to give detailed, detailed information about the events that happen in the interface solution electrode. So you have a solid electrode, you have a solution, and then you have molecules, reactants that are converted in intermediate and in product. So we use different techniques. In general, you have a, a light source, you shine, the interface electric solution. So the electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves will interact with the molecules and with the electrode will be reflected. For example, there are several configurations. Uh, and then you will detect the light coming out after the interaction with the molecules and the interface of the electrode. So using light with different frequency, we can perform FTAR and Raman, there are techniques that you probably know, but we can also use ellipsometry, that is a 
quite old technique used to, to measure the thickness of, of oxide layers, for example. But in this case, we perform ellipso microscopy, so you can get images of the surface of the electrode. I will show it later. And we can perform X-rays, absorption, and diffraction Oop. using synchrotron light. These uh, different techniques, we do not use light here. We use mass spectrometry, HPLC, or in a that are probably techniques you know. What we do is to take samples from the from the electro solution interface interface and then analyze the the samples with mass spectro spectroscopy spectrometry, sorry, HPLC and NMR. So I'm the co-PI of, of this project, and there are three associated researchers, Rafael Nagao, the of our institute at the Unicamp. I share the laboratory with, with Rafael. René Alfonso Nome Silva. René is also from our institute. And Arnaldo Naves de, Gri, de Brito for the Fisk Institute. Uh, I will also show the contribution of uh, my colleagues. Uh, so there are many questions we want to answer when we use these techniques. We have a rectangle and we have a product. And we want to know what happened in the middle, which is the path from the rectangle to the product, which are the main intermediates. Um, you have several path pathways, several parallel reactions occurring at the same time. So if we know the intermediate, probably, you will help us calculating the energy of these intermediates and helping us to understand why one product is formed in some condition and the other in other condition, for example. So I think that our project is key to bridge the gap between to bridge the gap between the experimental and the Okay, okay, it's working, it's working now. Okay. I don't know if I go there, if it will help. Hello, hello, okay. So I don't remember what I said, but yes, I, I do think that our project could be key to bridge the gap between the results of my colleagues with the, um, with the different materials they synthesize and test and the um, computational simulations. Um, when we perform photoelectrochemistry, we change the, pot the electrochemical potential in the electrode. We produce electrochemical reaction, and we perform the experiments in dark and in the, pres in the presence of solar light. So when we scan the potential, we transform reactants in, in, in intermediate and products, but you also can induce transformation in the electro surface. So if you go, are going to simulate a reaction, sometimes it doesn't matter the structure of the catalyst you synthesize. The important thing is the structure of the catalyst in the solution when you are performing the electrochemical oxidation, oxidation. And that is our, our contribution. We want to characterize the solution and the catalyst when the reaction is occurring at the same time. So, well, if you wanna perform spectroelectrochemistry, you need an spectroelectrochemical cell. Uh, this is one of the spectroelectrochemical cell 
We have, this is mainly the work of Jose Luis Bocci, that is a postdoc uh, working with me. So the cell is a conventional three electrodes, electrochemical cell, so you have a counter electrode, a reference electrode, and the working electrode. And this cell uh, work more or less like this. We have a threaded lip, oh sorry, we have a threaded lip, and then we have a window, O-ring, a counter electro, the body, the reference electro. <laughs> okay. So one important aspect of this cell is, is this a structure when you can change the window. The window must be transparent to the light you are using in your experiment. So if you, you, you're gonna perform, for example, FTAR, you need to put a window of calcium fluoride but you, if you are going to, to do Raman, you have to use a quartz window. And we can change several windows here to perform the experiment. So my colleagues synthesize the, the semiconductors and we put the semiconductor here at the surface of the carbon vitreous. And as you can see, it will be in front of the window so you shine the electro with the light you want, and then you catch the signal. And you can perform a lot of different experiments with this cell. Well, this is the FTIR. I will go fast here. I, I want to talk about technical stuff, you know. But this is a conventional FTIR. You have one here. This is our, our cell. So we have the FTIR beam. It will interact with the, with the mirrors and the, the beam will be guided to the surface of the cell. It will hit the electrode, be reflected, interact with the mirrors, and go to the detector. Here we have the potential stat, so we do electrochemistry, and we take FTIR spectra to the same time. So what you see, you see the bands of the reactant that are going out, and new bands appearing during to the uh, generation of intermediate. Um, products. This is a very, very fresh result, a collaboration with, with Ana Flavia Nogueira. So don't pay a lot of, a lot of attention to the analysis, but what they do was they have uh, iron oxide and they decorate the iron oxide with uh, Prussian blue. Um, Prussian blue with iron uh, two, three and cobalt two. Two, they prepare different combinations. You have also cyanide in the solution. So we put this catalyst at the surface of the electrode, I, I show in the previous slide, and we scan the potential, and we have the FTIR band during the, due to the cyanide stretching. So when you change the potential, what I want to show you, this is the only the Prussian blue, this is the Prussian blue, decorating the iron with cobalt 2 and iron 2 and this is the Prussian, the Prussian blue with iron 3 and this is the Prussian blue decorating the iron oxide with iron 3 cobalt 2. As you can see the response are completely different so the technique is sensible um, to the coordination of the cyanide with the iron and the cobalt and the oxidation state and the intensity of the bands change with the electrochemical potential in a different way. Uh, well, you can put the cell in a conventional Raman equipment. Uh, with Raman, I will skip it quickly, but you can, you can get sometimes, uh, you can complement your IR uh, results because simply because they are bands that, that are forbidden in FTIR that are, that are not forbidden in, in Raman. And this is especially interesting to follow the stretching of metal oxides. Uh, we will have several materials with metal oxides in the Cine project. Um, so for example, people apply it for batteries. That is 
um, the topic of division two, if I'm not right, wrong. So this is a, a lithium sulfur battery, a response for a lithium sulfur battery. For example, you are a 3.2 volt, and if you scan the potential, you see peaks. And if you come back, you see another peaks. So the authors here wanted to relate these peaks to chemical events. So they use Raman, and as you can see here, at 3.2 volts in in dark, you have an spectra. In black, sorry. Um, this band is due to uh, sulfurate rings. Um, when you when you reduce the potential, at some point, this band disappear, and you have a new, a new band due to S4 uh, species. That means that when you scan the potential, you are breaking the, the, the sulfurase ring and forming a S4 ring. Another interesting information is that then if you come back to 3.2 volts, you get exactly the same spectra that you had at the beginning showing the reversibility of the battery. Well, this is again uh, our cell, but now we are performing an experiment with X-rays, so we put a polymer in place of the solid windows, and we study the absorption of self rays in a model material, no, no, in a material of the cine. Hopefully, next year we will be study. Uh, we will be uh, performing an experiment with several semiconductors. So this this is a result for uh, platinum nanoparticles, uh, platinum cluster deposited on on silver nanoparticles. So this is in red the response for bulk platinum, and you have in black the the X-ray absorption with our particles, um, our clusters. As you can see, the responses are different. And in this region, you can get information about the band structure of the material, oxidation state, chemical coordination. But if you continue taking the spectra, you get information about the coordination number of a given atom, the interatomic distance, and the disorder. I think, in my opinion, this is the key technique for uh, your studies. And we hope to get a lot of spectra with a lot of different materials in in the series in the next years. I will skip this one, sorry. and I will start with the contribution of, of other researcher. All the previous slides were mainly my contribution together with Jose Luis Bocci, my my postdoc. This is. Uh, the contribution of of René Nome. I will I will show the picture later again. This is a an anti vibration table, and here René have two femtosecond lasers. They are able to synchronize the the femtosecond lasers. They can hit the surface with one laser, and then with the other, and synchronize the the difference in the at the femtosecond level. So they can do a lot of fancy stuff. If you have doubts about technical aspect of this set of techniques, please write to René, not to me, or to Guilherme Oliveira, that is his PhD student. So now we are able to perform Raman spectroscopy, but uh, with this femtosecond laser, you, you, you get a much higher signal the problem is that we can go only to 800 centimeter at the power of minus one but it, in some months we will be able to go until 4000 centimeters at the minus ga, minus one so i think that it could be a very interesting tool for us to detect intermediate in the reaction and also changes in the surface of the catalyst. Um, this is another 
toy of RNA. This is like a UV microscope. So, well, I will not stop here. Here we have they uh, shine a titanium oxide nanoparticle surface with methylene blue. It is a very it is very well known that you can degrade met methylene blue at the surface of titanium oxide nanoparticles. So it, it was a proof of, of concept uh, experiment. So in the first two two hundred uh, seconds, they cover the surface with a filter. But then when they retired this filter, they started to see spectra due to the degradation of titanium oxide. But what it, is, what it is nice of this experiment is that you can do it in different parts of the electrode at the same time. So at the end of the day, you are able to, to have a map with the velocity constant, with the distribution of the velocity constant in a surface. So what we want to do in the future is to uh, adapt our spectroelectrochemical cell to use it in this uh, configuration. Our electrochemical cell is, is very big to, to do it. Uh, mm, then the contribution of Rafael Nagao, maybe we need to turn off the, the light. So Rafael y, y Eduardo, maybe some of you know them. Uh, this is the ellipso microscopy for surface imaging. It was a technique developed by Rotterdam. He developed this technique when, when he was working with Professor Ertel in, in Germany. If I'm not wrong, this experiment this picture, a similar picture, was presented by Professor Ertel in his in his talk when he received the the Nobel Prize. Um, um, Eduardo went to work with Rotterdam, that is now in Canada, and so he's probably the the only person in Brazil that knows how to work with this technique. So. At the beginning of the experiment, this is a platinum surface. It was completely dark because the, the platinum surface was completely covered by CO, but then they introduced oxygen in the chamber of the experiment and the oxygen start to combine with the CO, forming CO2 and letting the uh, platinum surface free of CO. And that, and you can see that like white spots. When you see something white, it's platinum surface free of CO and dark, which is complete with CO. So you can monitor the oxidation of the CO from the surface with this technique. When we do electrochemistry, we, we think that everything happened at the same time and homo homogeneously. But you, you can see with this technique that that is not the case. So, so this is the, the cell. I will skip it this quickly. But this is the cell that Eduardo have developed for conventional electrochemical experiment. And now he's developing a, a similar cell, but with a quartz window to be able to shine the electrode and to perform experiment in dark and with solar light. And this is the first experiment in our laboratory. Of course, we, we will not start performing an experiment with a semiconductor with the new material, with some material that we don't know. So we use a, a, a material to, to as a proof of, of concept. And here you have a copper surface completely covered by chloride. And we know that if you scan the potential in the, you treat the potential in the negative direction, at some moment you are going to desorb the chloride from the surface. And is what you can see here is a wave traveling for the surface that is showing as the chloride is being desorbed and letting 
the surface free of chloride. So thus, the, the, when the surface is, br is bright like this, it is only copper, you have only copper, and with this dark, you have the chloride. The time, this is the time of the experiment. Um, then again, Rafael with Adriana, they have set a, a DEMS. It is to follow a gaseous product. When you form gases, you can monitor with this tool. You have one here in the first floor. The, uh, so Adriana worked here with Professor Fabio Lima, and now is with us, and have recently set this tool at the University of Campinas. So how does it work? You have here a, a work of Professor Fabio Lima from your institute. If you scan the potential negatively at some point in a CO2, in a solution containing CO2, you will see a negative current and the different curves are for different catalysts. As you can see, they have also monitored the production of hydrogen, methane, and ethane with different catalysts. So you can study the selectivity of the reaction on different catalysts with this tool. And as we are doing with all the techniques, we are preparing electrochemical cells to perform an experiment in dark and with solar light. Uh, last but not least, this is a very fancy technique. And Arnaldo Brito is uh, developing tools. Actually, this is not a new technique. What Arnaldo uh, does is X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, XPS. All of you probably know what the technique is, but he's working in different uh, ways of injecting the samples to perform this technique. We generally put the catalyst, dry the catalyst, and then insert it in a ultra high vacuum chamber to measure the spectra. In this case, he's able to use a micro shed of the nanoparticles of the semiconductor you are interested in, but this um, form in a suspension of water. So you have the nanoparticles with the shell of the water. And, and you have the, the micro shed, and they shine the micro shed with the X-rays, and they, they measure the radiation that is coming out. So they are characterizing the nanoparticles with the water shell. But now Arnaldo is doing another way of injecting the sample that will permit to work with bigger nanoparticles. This is mainly for nanoparticles. Uh, with this technique, you are able to work with nanoparticles of several mi microns, or microparticles. And most of my colleagues synthesize particles for water splitting and CO2 reduction the, with sizes around the, the micron. So the technique, this modification, let's say, will be uh, really, really important for for the dense en energy carriers, uh, hopefully for all the cine. Um, this is an experiment that actually is a result of a paper that Arnaldo submitted with Kaline. I don't know if Kaline is here, so you you could <laughs> explain better than me that they measure the XPS spectra of different routinian complexes. Um, Kalini calculate the, the spectra for the complex in vacuum. When you calculate the spectra, this peak should be here, and this, this peak should be here, right? In the same position that with the other complexes. But if you perform the calculation, putting water, you, you see a shift. And the shift is exactly what Arnaldo was able to measure experimentally with that micro shed. As you can see, the difference 
the peak here is completely in a completely different energy than the peak here. So, of course, in 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 this system, but also in almost all the systems that we study in the cine, the presence of water and the electrolyte in general is really really important. So the characterizations, all these characterization techniques that are performed in the present in the presence of the electrolyte could bring us very valuable uh, information. Well, some conclusion um, perspective. We have set a series of in situ techniques that permit us to obtain detailed information about photoelectrochemical processes in the interface electric solution. Hopefully it would be very, very important for you, your simulations. Uh, the characteristics of the, the catalyst studying the deck division are very different. The catalysts that Claudia prepared are completely different to the catalysts that Anna prepared. I'm not talking only about the, the, the physical chemical parameter, but if you, if you see the catalyst, they are very different. And that is important, for example, for technique where you need a, a beam to heat the catalyst and to reflect. So several times we need to adapt the, the techniques for uh, the different materials. Um, well, they, we, are, we have performed several measurements, all in, in dark, except for the FTIR and the HPRC and NMR, that is to say the fraction collector. We can do that in dark and in, and in light, but in several months, all the techniques will be able to be performed in dark and in light. And I think that next year we will, we will publish uh, several results in the frame of the, of the CINE project. Well, well, I want to thank uh, my group. This is Rafael, the professor with the share the, the group, uh, half, more or less half of the students are uh, involved uh, in this project. Of course, I, I, I have to thank to FAPESP, CNPQ, CAPES, uh, our institute, university, and thanks a lot, a lot uh, thanks again to all of you for the invitation. Thank you.